Evelyn Kiyomian is the founder and director of the Carrot School Project, which runs a school for children who live in extreme poverty and do labor for meals in Abidjan, Ivory Coast. Evelyn was born in Abidjan and was a street child herself. At age six, she taught herself to read. At 16, she had a son. And at 26, she made her way to Palo Alto, where she soon graduated from college and is now working on a master's in special education. On her first visit back to her home, she had stunning realizations that led directly to the creation of Carrot School in a town where only half the population can read and two-thirds of the girls are not in school. So two years ago, Evelyn became the help she wished she had had as a child. Carrot School, now serving 30 students, has amenities that Evelyn herself never enjoyed when growing up. Electricity, running water, two laptop computers, free uniforms and two meals a day, in addition to education and play of a normal school. They have also installed a water system for the whole community, providing clean water to 5,000 people. I grew up in a very small but yet very packed home. I am one of seven. I'm the youngest. Sometimes there was one meal a day, sometimes there was none, but I was just happy to be there. And, uh, my dad, we didn't have much, and so going to school wasn't something that was just offered to kids. So when it became my turn and there was no money to enroll me in school and when there was money, a male child was going to get enrolled before me, I decided to take matters into my own hand and I did my first business pitch so that I could uh, sell some cold water on the market for a lady. And she looked at me and she said, why would you do that? And I said, well, because I need money to buy pencil and a notebook to be able to go to school. But let's just say I was very determined. And there was a part of me that always somehow knew that if I just learn how to read, if I stay in school and if I go to school, my life will be different than what it was at the time and what I was seeing around me for myself and so many friends and so many mothers around. And so that determination made me really just want to learn how to read and write. 14 years ago, I think it's been now, I decided to just move and see what's elsewhere and get a better life for myself and my son. And so I landed in California. Uh, but back in 2016, I went back and um, it was just such a mixed feeling to be back. And I remember from the airport to uh, the house, the first red light, the car stops and there are about 15 children just rushing to the car with something. Some of them cleaning the windshield, some of them offering cold water and oranges and all sorts of things. You know, there's, there's like a, a, a supermarket by the red light and it's ran by children. And when I was talking to the children, they said, look, Miss Evelyn, when we're in the classroom and we're hungry, we want to be back here selling something so we can eat and so that our families can also eat. And so because of that, I said, you know, we're going to have a school. I don't know how, but this is what we're going to do because I want to make sure that the kids that we have are staying in school and we're accomplishing what we set out to accomplish. I uh, sat down and I called uh, my sister back there and I asked them, I said, well, I want to do something with the children on the street, but I want to focus on education. So what would it take us to get these kids together, you know, um, and teach them how to read and write? And uh, because I found out that the kids were working for a meal, I said, I really want to give them a meal because that will attract them and it will also give them a security of that nutritious meal, at least mm -hmm. for the days that they are with us. And so um, they are like, oh, okay, you know, if you want to feed 50 children, you know, it's X amount. And if you want to feed 100 children, it's X yeah. amount. Okay. And I looked at this and I'm like, wait, you mean I can feed 100 kids per day with that? I want to do that. Like, it, it just really made me feel like I was doing something important because of how far this little bit of money could go. So we have a girl right now, I'm going to keep her name to myself, and she is the testimony of what happens to a girl when she's not in school, okay? This girl is only 10. We've had her for two years. The whole time she was on the street, she was raped more than 10 times before we got a hold of her. 
it's such a testimony that every day we're able to, you know, provide a meal for these children and we're changing lives and they keep coming back and we can't wait to be able to bring more children in. Everybody's loving it, the teachers. We have teachers who were, who've been teaching for 15 years and they, they like, we've never seen this turnaround in our lives. It's amazing. Wow. The kids are really transforming the skills that they have acquired on the street. Take a nine-year-old who's never been in school, who's been in, on the street their entire life. They learn something. You just want to channel that thing into something that will be useful to them. So let's tap into their potential. It's like there is a, a little bit of a me in each one of them. And if we can shine it a little bit, right? That's where we get our name for and that big diamond from. They are priceless. And if we can shine them a little bit, I think they will shine. <laughs>